Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be talking about quirks, and not in the My Hero Academia way, but in the more traditional sense of an attribute thrust upon a character by the author. Now a quirk is different from general personality traits because what makes a quirk a quirk is that it is particularly unusual. In some cases a quirk may even come to define a character. But One Piece is full of characters with incredibly particular personality features, and today we are going to examine some of the very best. Just a warning though, these character quirks are almost entirely highly subjective, so this particular list will probably feature much more of my personal opinion than usual. Now to be considered a quirk, you simply need to adhere to the simple definition I previously gave. And with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top 5 character quirks in One Piece. Number 5. Zoro's Sense of Direction we're going to commence this list with a timeless classic involving everybody's favourite green-haired alcoholic swordsman, Zoro. Quite often a quirk is considered a detriment to general existence, like some sort of malfunction that needs to be overcome, and this is exactly the case here. Zoro's sense of direction redefines the word horrendous to the point where he seems to be incapable of travelling even the shortest distance or taking the simplest direction. In fact, the whole history behind Zoro becoming a bounty hunter was simply the result of this man not being able to find his way back home. So he just went with it. Another fantastic example of this quirk is during the Alabaster arc when the Straw Hats were looking for the Baroque Works bombers and Zoro ended up in some bushes outside of the city. But things go even further than that when this expectation is flipped on its head and as it turned out, Zoro was the first of the Straw Hats to make it back to Sabadi after the two year time skip. Of course this was 100% due to the help of Perona, but it was hilarious to see Zoro being so overconfident about his sense of direction and even ranking the Straw Hats by the order in which they'd arrived. So yes, this quirk is mainly used for comic effect, but there's something quite charming about having this absurdly strong character being so challenged in such a basic task. It does a lot to humanise Zoro and make someone like him a more relatable character to the audience. So to me, this is a very successful character quirk. Number 4 Hina referring to herself in the third person. Now this one is just adorable. Rather than using watashi, atashi, or any other common Japanese pronoun, Hina exclusively refers to herself as Hina. So for example, instead of saying something like I disagree, Hina would say Hina disagrees. Apparently this is a common thing that Japanese children do and it's seen as very cute. Now what really makes this particular quirk is that Hina makes no attempt to seem cute in any other aspect of her personality. In fact, she's a rather serious, stoic, and level-headed person who for no experience Explicable reason refers to herself in the cutest way possible. I said in my opening that a quirk can come to define a character, and I don't think there's a finer example on this list than Hina. The contrast of her speech to her general personality makes her a fascinating character. If she were just a super serious marine, she'd be boring. And likewise, if she was just a super cute entity. And given that this fusion of traits is almost entirely responsible for crafting a memorable character, I find it very fitting to put Hina's speech patterns at the number four spot. Number three. Virgo getting things stuck to his face. Of all of the bizarre quirks in the entirety of One Piece, I'm not sure there will ever be one more strange than this habit of Virgo. The official explanation is that Virgo is such a messy eater that he just ends up with food substances on his face at all times. I mean, you know how it goes, you're really enjoying a meal and all of a sudden you feel something on the corner of your mouth and then you realize that you are an uncivilized swine for having a tiny portion of fried egg that has failed to make its way into your mouth just sitting there in plain sight. How Embarrassing. Well, this is exactly like that, except that Virgo has the entire fried egg on his face. Or a dango. Or a half-eaten hamburger patty. In fact, this habit isn't even restricted to food, because Virgo also seems to attract utensils such as spoons. Meanwhile, Virgo himself is completely unaware of anything that seems to become attached to his face. In terms of how it gets used in the story, this quirk is a lot like Hina's, actually. A bit of crazy comedy to contrast an exceptionally serious character. Except that Virgo takes this a step further by being a pretty daunting antagonist, actually. But you you know, without this stupid quirk, Virgo would risk being another one of those characters with a cool design who fades into the sea of other cool designs. So I would like to offer my congratulations to Oda for succeeding in providing this man with one of the most absurd quirks ever witnessed in One Piece while not taking anything away from his imposing presence. Number 2. Kaido's Suicide Hobby 
I suppose that sounds pretty dark, and yeah, it kind of is. This is the only quirk on this list that is not used for comedic effect, but instead it manages to achieve something much greater. Kaido is currently probably the most terrifying figure in the entire series due to his monumental strength and terrifying personality. And Kaido is so strong that he has access to a quirk that no other character in the series could or even would dream of having, which is the hobby of pursuing death. Kaido has been sentenced to death 40 times, only to have each method of execution fail to render him a corpse. And so Kaido makes an effort to explore any and all potential methods of death with his introduction into the series being a particularly memorable attempt. Kaido made his way up to a sky island and he just jumped off. He fell 10,000 meters onto solid ground and proceeded to get up as if nothing had happened at all. It was one of the most amazing introductions of a character into the series, and this quirk effectively and instantly conveyed to me why he was considered to be one of the four emperors. That's a lot of work for one little quirk to do, and this one certainly pulled it off. But even so, we still have one quirk left to examine. Number one. Boa Hancock looking so far down on someone that she's actually looking up. Alright, so after number two, this may seem a bit underwhelming, but Boa Hancock's habit of looking so far down on people that she's actually looking up is by far my favorite quirk ever inserted into the series. It's just so ridiculous. And yet, it's extraordinarily effective in conveying Hancock's character. Arrogance, pride, and a general belief in oneself is a very difficult thing to illustrate outside of using dialogue or laughter. But Hancock's quirk gives us everything we need and more from one simple action. My particular favorite moment came during the Marineford arc when Hancock encountered Smoker and immediately plunged into her signature move to speak to a being that she considers entirely inferior. This combined with a couple of her other quirks like constantly kicking puppies, kittens, and baby seals that are rather conveniently placed in her walking path make Hancock a decent character. I mean, can you imagine if Hancock was all serious or all lovey-dovey all of the time? She would be so incredibly boring. But this quirk brings out the best of her character in actually what we would traditionally be a pretty despicable trait. That is a huge accomplishment, and the reason why this particular quirk finds its way to the top of this here list. And also because I really like it, and since I'm the one who makes the list, it's here. And that pretty much does it for the top five character quirks in One Piece. I know that you're all going to have very unique lists of your own to share, so please do so in the comments section below. But if you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel, then please do check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.